Welcome to Family Gamer TV. Now, I want to do something a bit different today. There's some interesting news um, hitting the headlines about an OFT um, announcement of the principles they've published as guidance to UK developers um, to make it fairer for children and families to understand how much they're paying for games and particularly how much they're paying for in-app purchases. Now, although this is potentially a little bit technical, potentially a little bit sort of highbrow, I think this may impact on how we consume games like Skylanders, Disney Infinity, and in particular, Angry Birds, Angry Birds Go, as we've been looking at. So as you can see on the site here, um, they've just announced their um, principles for online and app-based games. Um, and they had a, an investigation that ran through the end of last year um, and has, has now concluded and has led them to publishing um, their um, set of new principles. So let's have a look at what they say. So here we are, this is the OFT principles for online and app-based games. And if we scroll down, um, you can see why they were doing it. There was a real call for more, more um, transparency in understanding how much we're paying for in-app transactions and also what we'll be getting for those transactions and particularly a focus on, the, on games which are provided for children or may attract children to play it. So as we scroll down, we can see principle one, information about the costs associated with the game should be provided clearly, accurately and prominently up front before the consumer begins to play, download, sign up or agrees to make a purchase. Now, this is interesting because um, often you know, these apps and these games will be sold for free and perhaps in a sort of starter pack um, scenario like we've seen with Skylanders and Disney Infinity. Um, but it can be slightly unclear, you know, how much it's going to cost going forward. How many of those extra figures are you going to have to buy? And in apps, you know, how often will you have to make a transaction? And are those transactions essential to finish the game? So moving on, um, you can see a lot more information there in the PDF. And we'll, we'll pop a link to this um, in the video description so you can see. Principle two, all material information about a game should be provided clearly, accurately and prominently up front before the consumer begins to play, download or sign up or agrees to make a purchase. Again, this extends what they were saying in principle one and really saying, tell, tell us the consumer um, what we're going to experience in the game. What sort of game is it? Um, we need to have a good picture of the sort of thing we're buying before we make that purchase. So again, we'll move down to the next principle, principle three. Um, information about the game business should be provided clearly, accurately and prominently up front before the consumer begins to play, download or sign up to the game or agrees to make a purchase. Now, this is focusing on the game's business. And I think this is where perhaps the rubber hits the road because that term game business is quite, is quite tricky because for um, a developer, whether that's Activision, Disney or Rovio, um, to actually deliver a game that is transparent in terms of the business, it's the business model it's using um, to deliver that game to the consumer, it's potentially quite tricky. Um, you know, often we've we've challenged um, Activision in the past, you know, um, is it really warranted that you're selling um, Skylanders and so many more Skylanders figures? And the way they get around that is to say, look, we're, we're selling it as a collectible toy line. They're going to be toys to collect. So they're disclosing their business model by saying it's a collectible toy line. Now, the question is, with this third principle in place, is that enough just to say, look, it's a collectible toy line. You know how those, how those work, so you know what you're getting here. And I think potentially they may need to do a better job of disclosing what's coming, how many different figures you can buy and potentially looking at those special editions because that's, I think, where for families there's a lot of confusion. You know, when I buy a, a special edition figure, that grants me content in the game. It's essentially an in-app purchase, but it can be unclear what the content is that's going to appear in the game. And I know that some um, viewers of Family Gamer TV have often commented to say, look, I bought a special edition of this Skylander. I put him on the portal. He looked exactly the same as my normal Skylander. Now, of course, that, you know, in the packaging, there's nothing to say that it'll be different in the game. And really, it is just a, you know, an optional extra for, for collectors. But sometimes you can pay over the odds for that on eBay. Um, and because it's not clear on the packaging, you don't know what you're getting. Moving down to principle four, the commercial intent of any in-game promotional promotion or paid for content or promotion of any other product or service should be clearly distinguishable from the gameplay. Now, this potentially is where things like Angry Birds um, includes the cartoons and the other sort of merchandise in and around um, their their brand, their Angry Birds brand and their experience, which actually for kids, I think is really nice. It's nice to know what other things you can get hold of, um, potentially what other things you're going to buy, uh, but also being connected to the, the wider story universe Universe of, of that game. And it's just saying, as in this principle, um, it just needs to be clear up front. 
um, you know what those what those extra products are, and it need, those products need to be distinguished from the gameplay. And I think Angry Birds Go does this very well. It has a separate section um, for that downloadable cartoon content um, to the actual game. So I think they're already adhering to principle four. Moving on, principle five: a game should not mislead consumers by giving a false impression that payments are required, or that an integral part of the part of the way the game is played if that is not the case. Now again, this takes us into territory of these physical toy um, video game crossovers because potentially um, it can seem to parents or children can suggest to parents that you need to have all these figures, all these toys to complete the game. And something we're saying over and over again to mums and dads that we talk to is, that, is, is to say, look, Skylanders, um, all those Skylanders games are great value, particularly if you just buy the starter pack because you can finish the whole game you can access a whole bunch of the content. Maybe you can't get into every elemental zone. Um, maybe you can't get into so every sort of giant area or swap swap force zone, but you can complete the game as it is without buying extra content. Then on top of that, if you buy one character from each element, um, you can then access all those elemental zones. And if you buy one swap force um, um, grouping character, whether that's a dig, a spin or a jump, um, you can access all those swap force zones. And I think potentially the fact that we have to say this so often means that Activision and companies like that may need to do a better, a better job of communicating what's essential to play this game through to the end and what's optional. So moving on, principle five into principle six, games should not include practices that are aggressive or which otherwise have potential to exploit a child's inherit, inherent inexperience, vulnerability or credu credulity or to place undue influence or pressure on a child to make a purchase. Um, now, this is where they're selling directly in the games um, to children, so there's going to be children playing. Um, and, that, you know, th this often happens, that something will pop up and say, look, if you buy this, um, you spend real money on it, you're going to get a, phys a, a virtual advantage in the game. Now, I know when Skylanders Spire's Adventure first launched, those Soul Gem videos were really controversial, and lots of parents, when they saw those, were saying, Wait a minute, they're, they're, there's adverts in my game persuading my kids to come and pester me to buy more figures. Now, as Skylanders has developed, those Soul Gem videos have sort of diminished. So they're only included for new figures and you don't have those videos pop up for existing figures, which I, I really like. And you see a similar thing in Disney in Infinity. You know, you can go around those toy box worlds and it clearly advertises, look, if you spend this money, um, go and get this character, then... Um, in the toy shop, go and pest mum and dad to buy it, um, then you'll get this character in the game. And it is, it is selling um, directly to those players. And if they're playing alone, um, potentially mum and dad don't realise that's happening. Which goes back to, you know, one of these guiding principles to say, look, play games with your kids and then you won't be surprised at what they're experiencing. Principle seven, a game should not include d direct exhortations to children to make a purchase or persuade others to make a purchase for them. Now, again, this is in that same territory. You know, you don't have things popping up that's direct at the player, particularly if the player is a child, and says, look, you need to buy this to progress in the game. Going on to the final principle, principle eight, payments should not be taken from the payment account holder unless authorised. And this really is around due diligence and those potentially those platform holders uh, making sure that those transactions um, are appropriate and they don't have, um, I know for some parents that have watched and commented where they've bought an app for their child um, and maybe have that grace period set up on their iPhone or, or smartphone device and don't realise that the child can then make in-app purchases without making out entering the password a second time. And for parents, that's really important to go and check check that, that you've done that, those, that those settings are set up appropriately before you hand your child your smartphone. You wouldn't hand them your credit card, so you need to, to make sure that you have the, the proper protection in place before you hand them this powerful device, this smartphone computer. So that's the, that's the principles there. So along with those principles, they also have published a little while ago their top tips for consumers for online games. And I really like these. So this is just making sure that you don't get surprised by the sort of purchases that are being made and that you get the most out of gaming with your family. So check your settings. Make sure that you know, um, you know how those purchases are going to be made um, in the game. Make sure that you have the right password protection on your device before you hand it to your child. Read the game description. Read around it. I think that's a great, great bit of advice. Get to know the games. Don't just hand your child a game and expect them to get on with it. But, you know, engage with them. Engage with the whole, the, the choosing of the game and the research behind it before you actually come to play. Then when you get to the game, you'll be well informed.
Check whether the game contains a social element. Of course, players can communicate with each other online. And as parents, it's our responsibility to sort of manage that, not so just to clamp down and turn it off, but to have those discussions with children at the, at the appropriate age to make sure they understand um, what's happening, what sort of interactions they might have online, and also that we understand and we can, to some degree, police what we're comfortable with happening in our games. Number four, um, play the game yourself. Now, there is no substitute for this. Um, and actually, beyond sort of health and safety side of playing a game before your child plays it and using those PEGI ratings as a guidance and then going into the game and seeing why this game is rated as a particular PEGI age group, uh, you get those, the, the traffic light system. You've got green, which is free and seven, which is parental advisory. Um, and it's just there um, for information. You have then got the orange um, 12 and 16, um, which are legally enforced. So it's now illegal to sell t Peggy 12 games to anyone under 12 in a store. And then you have the red, the red traffic light for Peggy 18 games. So before you, you play those games with your children, do some research, but also play them yourself and play them with your child. Um, a lot of the, the families that comment on our YouTube channel here um, there's lots of lots of kids saying, I'd love my, my parents, my mum, my dad, my guardian to be playing games with me. How do I get them to do that? And I think by taking a proactive step and playing games with your children, you can avoid a lot of the downfalls and actually just get a lot more out of them as a family. Check your bills. Obviously, if in terms of the payments, keep an eye on where those payments are going out. Don't have them going to an email account um, that you don't check or that potentially has gone to spam. Um, make sure you know what's being what's being paid for with your account, and then you can avoid any um, any surprises that would be uncomfortable. Um, and then, you know, if you if you do get to a stage where you are unhappy with the experience you've got in an app or a game, of course, you know, get some advice, contact the publisher, but also you can use Citizens Advice in the UK um, or other services worldwide um, to, you know, to take those complaints and take those those conversations forward to find out how you can get a resolution to your satisfaction. So there you go. Quite a lot of technical detail there, but I think this is really interesting for how it might shape um, online online gaming and how it might shape how we pay for in-app transactions. I think particularly where you've got physical toys, and this is something that the um, guidance and the principles doesn't necessarily address directly, because for families, you can know, potentially on games like Angry Birds Go, you can either buy those in-app um, content that is in at materials physically by going and buying a toy and putting it into your game or you have the option of buying it virtually. Now this creates an added layer of complexity. Is it better value to buy the virtual good and just not have the toy or is it better to buy the toy? Now currently there's not enough information I don't think disclosed to make an informed decision with the prices changing in the app and the prices changing in store it's very difficult for a parent without doing a huge amount of research to, de to decide what's the best value where should they be buying um, buying their apps and you know the example there of Angry Birds Go but equally I think with Skylanders um, with Disney Infinity with these new the Lego games that are coming out that are using these sort of toy video game crossover sort of play scheme, I think potentially more will need to be done to disclose the costs, to disclose what's essential, what's optional, and also to, to disclose how, you know, the wider range of toys so parents can make an informed decision. So there you go, hope that was useful. A real close look at that o this OFT announcement today. Some technical detail, but I think something which is really important for any gamer of any age um, to stay, stay abreast of, to understand what's happening and how we're going to be consuming games. Now, the UK games industry has until the 1st of April to adhere to these, these principles, and I'm sure there's going to be some back and forth in terms of the legal standing of what has to be implemented legally and what is it, maybe an optional extra. Um, and we'll be tracking with this story and keeping an eye on it. That's all we've got time for today on Family Gamer TV, but we'll be back with more soon.